Hi, this is Dr. Tony Mork, uh, endoscopic spinal surgeon, and today I'd like to take a few minutes to just show you uh, what is possible endoscopically for the treatment of symptomatic cervical foraminal stenosis. So the problem being tight foraminal canals and uh, nerves getting compressed or pinched either from some bony problem like an overgrowth of facet joint, the uncovertebral uh, joint uh, getting enlarged, or some disc herniation in the foraminal canal. In any event, the foraminal canal is too tight and the nerve is getting pinched, giving rise to shoulder, arm, hand pain. So this is the uh, w Richard Wolf uh, endoscopic cervical set, and I'd just like to just give you a brief demonstration of how this goes. Um, this is the cervical spine. And if we go ahead and put this, I'm going to just aim it a little bit toward you. We can get a sense that these are the cervical facets as they overlap at various levels uh, on both sides. But the cervical facet joints lead into the foraminal canal where the nerve actually passes out. So this procedure is one of opening a portion of the foraminal canal and I will try to go through that process right here. The first thing can be done for a cervical foraminoplasty utilizing a five millimeter scope is to do the following. First, we utilize a small guide pin like this to establish where the facet joint that we're interested in. So for example, at this case, at the uh, five six uh, facet level and the area I'm interested in relieving or removing is highlighted in red here. This pin goes right on top of the area of interest, and on top of that is followed by a cannula. This is the size of the cannula, between three and four millimeters, and through a very small incision, this is passed over the guide wire. Once this is passed over the guide wire, I have a small obturator that goes down to the facet or the level of interest. This establishes the initial port through the soft tissues down to the area of interest and it is followed by a cannula which goes over the obturator down to the area of interest. And then at this point, the initial obturator can be removed and a little rubber seal placed. This allows the port uh, to be established and then at this point the vertebroscope or the arthroscope which is this and can be inserted then down the cannula to the area of interest. At this point you can see that we have the the hollow tube established down to the area of interest and then we have the uh, we have the uh, endoscope which is able to move in and out at this point. Now I want you just to watch this because I'm going to just show you a few things that we can pass through here down to the surgical area. And this is one of a few different things. All these instruments are passing through the inside of the endoscope. And this, we can actually work with this, lift off soft tissues or try to separate uh, different tissues from another with this very small little soft tissue dissecting unit. Once down to the bone, this goes again right through the endoscope. This is a very small burr and you can act, this is a very sharp little burr and you can see at the end that the bone can actually be removed with this burr under direct vision. Once this has been done, anything that would like to, is supposed to be grabbed can be grabbed with something like this. Anything, any uh, small fragments of bone or disc or soft tissues can be grasped with this and then remove right through the endoscope. At the end, when you're trying to look for additional things, there is actually a probe which can be passed through like this and then we can actually try to move the probe around to try to loosen or identify anything else that has to be removed. Eventually, this probe will be utilized to identify the channel. Once the bone has been removed sufficiently, a probe, a ball tip probe like this, should be able to pass freely through the foraminal canal where the nerve is, giving us a sense that we've completed the foraminal decompression. So, it can be seen that using a, a, an instrument that's about five or six millimeters in diameter 
can be used with uh, equipment to get down to the foraminal canal and actually remove bone and uh, uh, remove bone around the nerve that's trapping it and even disc fragments have the potential to be removed using this approach endoscopically. And uh, I think uh, this is, represents a, a real advance in terms of abilities to do this type of surgery endoscopically without the use of a fusion. Hey, thanks for looking at this. If there's any further questions, uh, please don't hesitate to contact me at uh, drtonymark.com or uh, the office in uh, Newport Beach. Thanks very much.